Ladies and, so to speak, gentlemen, someone suggested to my wife that it might be nice if I gave some sort of a lecture here today, open to the general public, with the proceeds to go to charity. That's fine by me. A lecture, why not? Really, what do I care? Of course, you understand I am not a professor, I'm devoid of academic degrees, but nonetheless, for almost 30 years now, and at considerable risk to my health and whatever, mind you, I've been working on problems of a scientific nature, pondering them, and occasionally I even write scholarly articles, if you can believe that. What I mean is, um, not exactly scholarly, but if you'll excuse the expression, uh, sort of scholarly. As a matter of fact, I've, I've written a very interesting article entitled The Problem with Insects. Uh, my daughters liked it a lot, especially the part about the bed bugs. I read it to them. <laughs> of course, um, <coughs> then I tore it up. You can write about bed bugs all you want, you know, but the only thing that will get rid of them is boric acid. <laughs> and we even had them in the piano. Um, <clears throat> as the subject of my lecture today, I've chosen, I think I may put it that way, the Harmful effects which can be observed in human beings as a direct result of indulgence in tobacco. I myself smoke, but my wife told me I should speak today about the dangers of tobacco, so there's, uh, there's really nothing more to say, is there? <laughs> you, on the other hand, will, I hope, devote your serious attention to what I'm about to say, otherwise I really don't think we'll get anywhere. Now, if, if there's anyone who has qualms about a dry scientific lecture, anyone who doesn't like the idea, Feel free not to listen, or even leave if you want to. Now, let me make a special point of reminding any physicians who may be present that my lecture contains many useful observations for them, since tobacco, aside from its harmful effects, is also used in medicine. For instance, a fly placed inside a container of tobacco will die, usually from nervous convulsions. <laughs> anyway, tobacco is, so to speak, a plant. Whenever I give a lecture, my, my right eye starts twitching. Sorry. Please, please don't pay any attention. It's just nerves. I'm a very nervous man, generally speaking, and uh, my eye began twitching in 1889. Uh, September 13th, actually. That was the day my wife gave birth to Barbara. That's our fourth daughter. <laughs> All of my daughters were born on the 13th. <laughs> Um, nonetheless, since our time is short, I think we'd better stick to the subject of our lecture. I should point out, however, that my wife runs a music school and a private boarding school. That is not exactly what you'd call a school, but, you know, something sort of like a school. Now, just between you and me, my wife likes to complain about never having enough of anything, but the fact is she's managed to put, so to speak, a little something aside, maybe uh, 40 or 50 thousand. Of course, uh, I don't have a penny to my name. <laughs> Not one. But what's the point of talking about it? <laughs> now, at the boarding school, I'm in charge of the housekeeping department. I make all the purchases, take care of the help, do the accounts, manufacture the students' notebooks, keep the bed bugs under control, walk my wife's dog, <laughs> catch the mice, Last night, one of my duties was to issue a pre-measured amount of flour and butter to the cook, since the schedule called for pancakes for breakfast. Uh, now, to make a long story short, today, when the pancakes were ready, my wife sent word down to the kitchen that three of our boarders would not be eating pancakes, since they had swollen glands. The result of this, of course, was that we had a few extra pancakes, and what exactly were we supposed to do with them? Well, at first, my wife told us to put them in one of the storage closets, and then she thought it over, she thought it over, and she said, Oh, go ahead and eat them yourself, you old bag of bones. <laughs> That's what she calls me, and she's in a bad mood. Bag of bones, or uh, sometimes snake in the grass. <laughs> or sometimes um, Satan. <laughs> now I ask you, do I look like Satan? And she's always in a bad mood. Well, I didn't just eat those pancakes. I gobbled them down without even chewing because I'm always hungry. <laughs> Yesterday, for instance, she wouldn't let me have any dinner. You're just an old bag of bones, she said. What's the use of feeding you? <laughs> However, um, we seem to be gossiping, and I think we've gotten a little off topic. Let us continue. Although I'm sure you'd all rather be listening to some music, some, 
some show tunes or an aria. God, oh, my man. I can't remember exactly where that's from. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that at my wife's music school, I am not only in charge of the music program, but I'm not only in charge of the housekeeping, but I also teach all the courses in mathematics, chemistry, physics, history, solfeggio, geography, literature, and so on. <laughs> we also offer courses in uh, dance, voice, and drawing as well. My wife charges extra for those, although I am the dance and voice instructor as well. <laughs> <laughs> Our school of music is located on Mutt Street, number 13, Mutt Street. That's probably why I'm such a failure living as I do on number 13. And all my daughters were born on the 13th. And our house has 13 windows. Well, what's the point of talking about it? If you'd like to discuss any of this with my wife, you can stop by the school at any time. Uh, a school catalog is available from the men at the door for 30 cents a copy. Or you can buy one from me if you'd like. 30 cents a copy? Would, uh, would anybody care for one? No? 20 cents? <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. That's right. 13 Mutt Street. I'm afraid I, uh, I haven't been much of a success at anything. I've gotten old and stupid. And here I am, giving a lecture. I look perfectly happy up here, but what I'd really like to do is to start screaming at the top of my lungs or run away someplace where no one can find me. And there's no one I can complain to. There are times when I even feel like crying. You say, well, there's always your daughters. What daughters? I try to talk to them, they only laugh at me. My wife has seven daughters. No, excuse me, I think it's six. No, seven. Anna, the oldest, she's 27, and the youngest is 17. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not happy. <laughs> grown into a half-wit, a, a non-wit, but essentially what you see before you is a very happy father. Essentially that's the way it's supposed to be, and I certainly wouldn't have it any other way, but oh, if only you knew. <laughs> I've lived with my wife for 33 years, and I can say that those are the best years of my life. Well, not exactly the best, but, you know, so to speak, they have passed. <laughs> <laughs> to make a long story short, and one happy twinkling of an eye, and frankly, I don't give a good goddamn anymore. Anyway, I don't think she's here yet. Yes, my wife is not here. So I can say whatever I feel like. <laughs> I'm really afraid. <laughs> she terrifies me whenever she looks at me. And, and here's another thing, all of my daughters are unmarried and they've been unmarried for a long time. Which is probably because they're bashful, but also because men never get the chance to meet them. My wife won't give parties, she never invites anyone to dinner, she's so cheap. She's a hateful, stuck-up old shrew, and that's why no one ever comes to see us. But, but now this is confidential, this is just between you and me. You can meet all of my wife's daughters on all major holidays at their Aunt Natalie's. Uh, she's the one with the rheumatism. Always uh, wears a yellow dress with little black dots all over it. <laughs> it makes it look like she has cockroaches crawling all over her. <laughs> She always serves something to eat, and uh, if my wife's not around, you can also, uh... <laughs> of course, I have to point out that it only takes one little shot to get me drunk. Which makes me feel good inside. But, at the same time, I get so sad. I can't even tell you. I start thinking about when I was young for some reason, and for some reason it makes me want to run away. Only you knew how much it makes me want to run away. Run away, just dump everything and run and never look back. Where? I don't care where. Just run away from this stupid, cheap, vulgar, filthy life that's turned me into a pathetic old wreck. Pathetic old halfwit and run away from this stupid, ugly, evil, evil miser of a woman I'm married to. Run away from a wife who's tormented me for 33 years. From the music lessons in the kitchen, my wife having all the money and all the ugly, mean things I have to live with. Until I get to someplace far away. And then I'll just stop in a field and stand there like a tree or a fence post, like a scarecrow, and stare up at the enormous sky and 
stand there all night just looking at the moon. The quiet, shining moon. And just forget about it all. If only I could forget about it all. If only I could get out of this ugly old tailcoat I got married in 33 years ago. The one where I give lectures where the proceeds go to charity. Take that! And that! <laughs> I know I'm old, I'm poor, I'm pathetic. I'm just like this vest, the, the bag is all torn and falling apart. But I don't need to think I'm better than all this. And I'm an honest man. I used to be young, I was smart. I went to university, I had dreams, I wanted to be a decent human being. And now, I don't want anything. The only thing I need is peace and quiet. Just a little peace and quiet. Uh, um, however, uh, my wife is now waiting for me in the wings. <clears throat> She's here. She's waiting for me. <laughs> well, I see my time is about up. Um, if, you, if you wouldn't mind asking, if she asks, would you mind saying that um, the lecture, well, I'd be very grateful if you wouldn't mind saying that the old bag of bones, me, I mean, behaved with dignity. <coughs> She's watching. As a consequence of which, the fact I mean that tobacco contains a powerful toxic agent, as I have just described, we see that smoking is by no means advisable, and I hope, so to speak, that my lecture here today has produced a beneficial effect. That's all I have to say. <coughs> Dici et animam livavi. Thank <laughs> you.